You're a highly sensitive person and you want to know how to thrive. You found the right video. So first off, if you're new here and you want to know how to thrive in spite of things like anxiety, being highly sensitive and everything that else that comes with heavy emotions, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. These are the things I explore as well as other topical things to do with well-being. So please do subscribe and turn on the notifications so you know each and every time I post a video. So today I'm talking about being a highly sensitive person. If you're not sure what that is, I have made a video in the past kind of highlighting exactly what it is. I'll link to that in the comments and it will also come up on the end screen. But to be honest with you, if you've got this far into the video and you're wondering whether you're highly sensitive, then it's likely that you are. Today I'm listing six ways which I believe are essential to thriving as a highly sensitive person, bearing in mind that thriving does not mean the absence of struggle, but it does mean that it can become an absolute asset for us. Make sure you stick around for number six as well, because I believe it's the most important one and everything comes together when you recognize that one, right? So make sure you stick around. So the first thing I think that's really important is to make sure that you find time to have time out, wherever that may be and however that might be. If you're highly sensitive, certainly in the way that I am, being around people, interacting, all of that stuff can make me feel overwhelmed very quickly and I have to make sure that I find time out. And I mean literally isolate. In a room, on my own, curtains shut, no light, sunglasses on. I mean, I go the whole hog, yeah, literally isolate. But don't isolate too much because it's going to have the opposite effect, yeah? I appreciate lots of what I say contradicts itself and that's okay. But it is important for somebody like me, them times of isolating and withdrawing from everyone is so important because everything impacts me on such a level because I feel everything so deeply. The next thing for me is learning to embrace silence. It can be so easy when we're thinking a lot and for me overanalyzing a lot and I'm, you know, kind of taking on everybody else's emotions so I'm overanalyzing them as well and it can be easy to just consistently get caught up in the momentum of everything else. I get in the car and the podcast goes on or the radio goes on. I come home and the TV's on. I'm doing the washing up and the music's on. Learning to embrace silence has become huge for me. And that doesn't necessarily mean become rigidly sticking silence in everywhere. It might just mean turning the radio off in the car. It might just mean when you're doing the washing up, you don't have the music on. Or maybe at best, you like to use them calming sounds. For me, when I jumped straight to, sil to silence, uh, silence kind of makes me anxious as well, so I got a bit overwhelmed by that. So sometimes you're using some calming sounds, no lyrics uh, in music, just calming sounds, whether it's calming piano or kind of meditation music, that stuff can be really important. The reason I say no lyrics is because we can get caught up in the lyrics. If you're highly sensitive, lyrics are songs you get caught up in, yeah? So you will find that removing the lyrics and, and no TV shows, yeah, not getting caught up because we get caught up in them and the emotions of them, coming away, using silence, or at least quiet time at first, is gonna be really, really beneficial. Do things that force you into the moment. Now for me, when I go to the gym and lift weights, that really, really helps me, because I just get caught up in trying to push out that extra rep, and it forces me to come away from everything that I'm sensitive to and be, and be forced into the moment. Football, playing football really, really helps me with that as well because I'm right in the game, I'm forced into the moment. But whatever that might be, right, whatever pastime it might be, whatever it is, you know, that being forced into the moment, being forced to be present, removes all the, the overwhelm that comes with sensitivity. You'll find ways to do it, you have to find ways to do it, uh, but, but, but make sure you find healthy ways, yeah? Uh, I believe something like gambling, for example, is so highly addictive and people get so caught up in that because that forces you into the moment. Those ways are gonna be unhealthy. Find some ways that are gonna be less detrimental to your life, but they're gonna be really powerful in giving you a break from that sensitivity. Find ways to release your emotions. Now, anyone that knows what I talk about all the time knows that I, I, I get a bit annoyed with this over-emphasizing talking all the time. You should talk about your problems. I think you should try and release your emotions in however that may be. Now, for me, sometimes that means putting on music that's going to aid me in crying so that I can get that emotion out through crying. Sometimes it might be punching a punch bag at the gym, yeah, even though I don't know what I'm doing when I do it. That releases some of that pent-up stuff inside of me. Um, some people find it in art, some people find it in music, 
all of all of these different things, whatever it is, you need to find time to make sure that you can release that emotions. You'll become more and more aware of them if you start to do body scans, by the way, start to get at one and know your internal barometer and understand where your emotions are, how and where they get stuck so that you can look to release them. Them clogged up emotions, for me, just make me even more sensitive. So I have to try and free myself from them as and where I can. Learn to love yourself. Now, I recently did a video on self-love routine. You should check that out. In fact, I'll link that in the comments too and put it on the end screen because I think that's really, really important, okay? Learning to love myself um, has been so beneficial because it helps me to find compassion. When I get overwhelmed, it's easy to get caught up in this cycle of beating myself up and hating myself and wishing I wasn't so sensitive and wishing I could just be like other people, okay? Um, but learning to love myself for who I really am has really, really helped me. And that's an ongoing process and one that falls down on some days and some days I'm really good at, okay? But learn to do it, practice, consciously become aware of how and why you need to love yourself. Now, the last thing and most important is get to know who you are. Get to understand your sensitivity. You have a superpower, okay? And it is a superpower, right? Us highly sensitive people, I absolutely believe we're on this planet Earth to do things, right? We can do things that other people can't even understand, let alone do. Get to know yourself, get to know where you benefit. For me, when I'm coaching, when I'm doing group coaching in any organization, that sensitivity helps me to lock into what's going on in the room. I get to hear and listen to people on a much, much deeper level. I can see inside of them when they're talking. I know when they're using a narrative to protect themselves. I've really honed in that skill and it's a superpower. Um, but if we don't nurture it and learn to understand it and, and, and really get at one with it and get to know it, it only feels overwhelming, it only feels detrimental, and that's what we don't want. You have a superpower. Find it, get to know it, become at one with it, and go out and change the world. That's what this video has been leading up to. That's what this video has been about. Being highly sensitive is, is can be draining, it can be really, really difficult, but when we find ways to nurture it, we can thrive, and we can change the world.